Hmm. There's something glittering in that cave. I will investigate. A gold brick. This one brick is worth more than all those that Colin Kelly can bake in a year. I'll disguise it and make it look the same as an ordinary brick. You get some red paint and spreads it on there. Meanwhile, pups on the prowl. No evil eye will suspect its great value. There's an interlude here, you know, the cat, the pup, and Ignats. They're hiding, they're looking, who knows what they're looking for. I'll keep my eye on them. That dear crazy cat will not suffer the sting of that brick today, no sir. One false move and I'll drag him unconscious to jail. Crazy Cat's chilling out under the tree. Ignat's giving him the eye. You know, it's tempting, but no. Anytime I waste a solid gold brick on that cat. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> Pup is amazed. Either I'm crazy or he's crazy. Yes, sir. Who's crazy, Officer Pup? Homeway Dry Cleaners, $18 for cleaning rugs. Eighteen dollars for cleaning a rug? How could a rug get that dirty? I was away all summer. There was nobody here but Rochester. I can't understand it. Uh, Jack, here's another bill signed by Rochester. It's from Scratch, Match, and Patch, Interior Decorators. <laughs> interior Decorators? Uh, Seventy-eight dollars for patching ceiling and repapering living room. Patching ceiling, repapering living room? I'm going to ask Rochester about this. You don't have to. Here's a bill that explains it. Seven dollars for 18 bottles of gin. <laughs> Eighteen bottles of gin. Let me see who that bill is from. Hmm, the Central Avenue Personality Shop. <laughs> I'm going to find out about this. Oh, Rochester! Yes, boy! There's something I want to talk to you about. Couldn't you write me a letter? <laughs> no, I couldn't. And come right out here. Okay. Rochester, take a look at this rug cleaning bill. Mm. Now, take a look at this bill for repapering the living room. Mm. Mm. And this bill for 18 bottles of gin. <laughs> well, say something. What a soiree! And you don't, that you don't have to tell me, and that party almost ruined my house. What happened? Well, boss, it was kind of a dull evening, so I invited a few friends over. Uh-huh. And some of them got... Well, to use a medical term, coagulated. <laughs> well, that explains the rug and the wallpaper. What happened? What about the ceiling? Some of them were higher than others. <laughs> what? Man, were they flying. Rochester, that still doesn't explain the ceiling. How did, those, how did you get those holes in it? I told you my friends did that. Oh, the ones that were flying. No, the ones that were shooting them down. <laughs> Rochester, this is the last straw. I'm going to punish you. Oh, Jack, put down that hairbrush. He's too old for that. Okay. Anyway, it always hurts me more than it does him. <laughs> now, Rochester, this is a final warning. I don't want your friends holding those kind of parties in my house anymore. My goodness, in their condition, how did they get home? Oh, it was easy. You know that white line down the middle of the street? You mean they followed it? Followed it, boss. They were holding on to it. <laughs> I don't doubt it, and I'm going to talk with you later about your... Come in! Oh, you and your singers. Who is it this time? Well, if you must know, Smarty, it's Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra? Yeah. Boss, you mean, won't you tell me when we will meet again? That's him, Rochester. Monday, Monday, or always. That's enough, Rochester. If you're in love. That's enough, that's enough. Come on, Barry, let's finish these bills before Sinatra gets... No, 
need to tell me now what makes the world go round. Rochester. When at the sight of you, my heart begins to pound and pound and pound. Rochester, I said that's enough. Well, today I've got a real treat. Uh, one of my all-time favorites ever since I was a kid. It's uh, Rick O'Shea by the great Stan Lind. This is a hip shot Easter episode, April 18th, 1976. And, uh, you know, I was looking through the little stack that I have. I don't have a huge number of them, but, you know, I have a nice little stack, and I was looking through them, and this one is just... Uh, really uh, they they put more effort into the color and it's more vivid color you know I guess it's spring uh, I'm not sure if Stan Lynn actually did the colors on these uh, it's always kind of mysterious but you know uh, hip shot he's kinda like me you know he's he's uh, devout but you know, just no church will have them. You know, I mean, you can't. There's this. You know, you can't. You, you, you know, you just can't fit in. So he's got his own church. You know, and he drives. He goes past. You know, thinking another Easter Sunday, one of the two big days of the year for church going folk. Of course, Christmas is the big day on account of it being your birthday, boss. But I reckon Easter is even bigger if a man looks at the meaning of it it's sorta of like uh, Christmas was the promise and Easter was the proof and of course Hipshot comes to church and uh, Stan Lind has uh, passed on now but I think he deserves to be remembered among the pantheon of, of the great Western artists in this country uh, he, you can see he has a real love for what he's doing and you know, when it comes to being a cartoonist, uh, you, you just don't get much better than Stan Lind. And, uh, you know, his, his early strips were, you know, sort of a cartoon nature, but then he became more of a, you know, there's, you know, there's still cartoon to an extent, but he also had a, had a realistic stroke. Uh, after Rick O'Shea, he later had a strip called Latigo, which was in the same vein you know, just slightly different characters. And I think maybe Hipshot came over. And, like, Rick O'Shea kind of phased out, and and it became Hipshot for a while, the strip. And then, uh, I don't know, that ran out of steam somehow or something, and, and uh, he came out with Latigo, and that kind of ran into the 80s. I have, I have a number of those strips. And uh, you can bet that I'll be featuring one, you know, sometime in the future. This is Comic Book Shaman, and uh, I'd like to thank all of you for uh, for tuning in and, and, and taking the time to, to look at what I'm doing here. And I know that it's a sacrifice, you know, we're all busy in life. But I think, you know, I'm on this mission to slow people down, and that is where I'm heading with my artwork, you know, to kind of slow people down and to extend your attention span because we've been devolving into the shorter and shorter attention and I think that it needs to be stretched you know and if if you don't try you know it'll never happen so adieu listen to your woman but not closely